Please welcome Christopher Plant and let him plant new ideas about the internet into your tired minds. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. I just laughed so much this thing fell off my head. That was quite good. Uh, plant something on him in a minute. Right, super. So, hi, everybody. Um, uh, you'll be glad to know I'm not, and I'm actually glad to know, I'm not going to be talking about astrophysics or, indeed, panelax with big kind of constructions on top of them. All very interesting, and definitely Nietzsche as well. Um, so, I'm going to talk about something in a minute when it arrives. So, here we go. Let's try it. So, social media. Now, this is something that I'm very interested in. And I think, can I ask you, I can kind of just see you a little bit. Let's come over here. How many of you guys are actually members of a social network? So truthfully. So that's like everyone, apart from you three or four. <laughs> oh, you, right, okay. Very good. So you can see it kind of something is that actually affects us all, isn't it? So social media, updating your operating system. I've already been introduced by the plant squasher over there. Uh, that's me, British Slovak Business Centre. Uh, we're a, a government initiative from the UK, um, Chamber of Commerce initiative, and we're actually promoting British business, British export from the UK, and also looking for business opportunities within Slovakia. We've just been set up now. We had a very nice year. We're in uh, wave two of the operation. Wave one was already introduced. It's 41 countries around the world, and Slovakia were chosen to be a part of wave two. And I'm proud enough to say that we're leading our field at the moment, so we're just behind Poland and Romania in opening our business center, which was opened on the 5th of March, so this month, by Lord Livingstone from UK, uh, the UK State Minister. So, enough about me. I'm going to talk to you about a few things today, and there's a few facts about social media. There's a few dangers which my colleague said to me upstairs that uh, it might be a bit pessimistic, but to be fair, I think you know, we, we need to know about these things. But there's lots and lots of opportunities for individuals and for business. Um, and then we'll have a look at the future just briefly. So let's get on with it. Fact. 93% of teens, I don't know whether 12-year-old counts as a teen, but 12 to 17, 93% of you go online. That's a lot, isn't it? 63% of you, every single day. And 73% of us, and I think it was about probably about 93% of us here, are actually a part of a social network. So you can see that the whole social thing is quite important. We're all using it. Online presence now for businesses is ever-expanding, and older generation get involved. That's not me. Right? I'm a bit older, but not the older generation. But the silver surfers are really into it now. So the grey-haired people are on the internet as well. That's a third of the world online. Amazing. 61% of us in Europe. Now, does anybody know the answer to this question? It's not a fact. I just must have left that on there by mistake. It's a question. Why are teenagers leaving Facebook? Anybody? Hands up. Nope, not you. Yeah, go on, sorry. Mm, anybody else? <laughs> anybody else? You're right. Because our parents are on it. Absolutely, spot on. Because our parents are on it. So why do we want to stay on Facebook? It is a bit of a, a problem, a bit of an issue. And I think we need to... Uh, we're looking for initiatives at the moment to help parents understand what Facebook and social media is all about, to, to interact with their children, not just to spy on them and check what you're all doing. And uh, all the teenagers here will be saying, and all the, the older students, you know, I don't really want to tell my mum and dad that I'm off to the pub on Friday. But, um, you know, obviously it's, uh, it's important. We don't want to make sure that we alienate our parents, but also we want to make sure that we kind of try and work with them. So we're looking for sort of strategies to try and try and help you guys and parents and teachers sort of understand the whole thing about social media and how we can actually work together to make better places and better things. So if you look in the last five years, from 2007 to 2012, well, 2012 isn't now, a couple of years ago, but the number of social network users have grown from 430 million to 1.4 billion, which is massive. 56.4% online populations using social social networks has gone up to 82% now. 
which is quite incredible. And the dominant method of communication now, SMS is, of course, but it's not email anymore. It's actually social networks. So we're actually speaking to each other on social networks all the time. So move to the risks now. Hmm. Trade-off, what are we going to do between privacy and sociability? So I want to be social, I want to do a lot of stuff, but I also want to protect myself. I'm in a different age bracket than you guys, but obviously I want to protect my family. If my pictures of my kids are on, uh, on there, I want to make sure that there's the right people are looking at those. But for you guys as well, it's all about personal identity and permanence. Permanence will come to in a second, but personal identity is very important because at the same time as constructing your personal identity, you can also be deconstructing it, which means posting the wrong information, making yourself look good, making yourself look appealing. So if you're going for your next job, if you're going for your next job interview, if you're looking at things like this, it's really important to make sure that all of you look at your profiles and, and look at it as a prospective employer. So I'm going to look at your profiles, and, and this is what companies do nowadays. They'll look at, they'll go into Facebook or they'll look at your social media, and they'll be thinking, okay, so what do these guys kind of do? Now, some of the guys today, the, the lady before me, I'm sure she's very busy with her astrophysics, but there's a lot of other people that perhaps are not so busy with those kind of things. And so therefore, you just have to be a little bit careful to make sure that you're saying the right message. Obviously, the negative social influences, we have to watch out for the cyberbullying, child grooming, and also protect our privacy. And these are all important subjects, which, you know, it's not the time to cover now, but there's a lot of information in there as well. So... We've got to also be susceptible to this identity theft, which we talked about many times before, the manipulation. And, and, and it, the identity theft, you know, our identities can be used against us and stolen. They can be used to buy houses, buy cars, all sorts of stuff. So we have to be extremely careful. And obviously, for adults, the grass is greener on the other side kind of syndrome on social media. So all of us are at risk. So are we making ourselves targets now? We're freely sharing our information. Is that going to happen? Companies and other institutions are learning how to get hold of our proper data, the inf interesting information from consumers, retail, all the kinds of informations that help them sell products and help them find people. So what's happening there? And also, what we write on social media, our digital imprint. So my three-year-old boy already has a digital imprint. I mean, he didn't go up to my computer and write it himself, but he's on there from families and friends and things like that, so he already has a digital imprint. So it starts sometimes even before we're born. My sister posted scans of her baby that wasn't even born yet. Anyway, permanence, again. But after all that, there is still a silver lining, and obviously we wouldn't be doing this if there was no reason to do it. So looking at the risks and the dangers are important, but also we've got to look at the champions, look at the things that are important. So we can present ourselves how we want to be seen. We can present ourselves in a great way. We can make ourselves feel dynamic. We can be seen in the best light, we can look at ourselves in a brand new way and we can make ourselves feel very, very good. The social media also can be the number one provider of news. We can actually find out what's happening in the news, we can find out in the gossip, we can find out what's happening in different countries. We can use TweetDeck, Twitter, all these things to find out all information about our favorite football teams or our favorite dancing, whatever we want, but also news and information, retail as well. And obviously it develops senses of empathy, connection, and it really highlights the opportunities in education and business. So you can, for instance, with uh, one of the companies we were working with last year, we were able to help their HR team to develop some young, interesting information, so on an, more on an HR base, but to develop with universities um, and to actually educate them and get them into workshops. For instance, this was an uh, accounting law kind of firm, not the most interesting for probably most of you, but they're also creative groups as well. So they can actually show you and help you learn and develop your skills from a business perspective. So business are actually looking at students, they're looking at people that are leaving, leaving studying now, looking at universities. And, and please remember that when you apply to university, you know, they're going to check you out there as well. So it's all about being careful. Personal use again. So is it really a 50-50 trade-off? I'm not sure. I think you have to see individually what you feel. But, you know, the negatives are the permanence. And I want to explain to you a little quick story about permanence in a second. Vulnerability, it makes us vulnerable to attacks. If we just put up something, we can be cyber-bullied, we can be and get in trouble. We've got the pluses, obviously, identity. We can promote ourselves, we can promote our products, we can do everything like that. And also 
connections. We can make connections in every single group. We can make connections in this area, in that area, in another area, and we can join all those connections together. So you can make groups, study groups, private groups, teachers can make groups. It's all this kind of stuff. So it's very, very interesting. And business, though, it's got to be a 90-10 trade-off. So 90% for, because permanence is maybe not so important. I think um, I had a lot of case studies with uh, Nestle, McDonald's, uh, that had made a few mistakes in social media. Um, but, you know, sometimes mistakes can be just advertising, but some mistakes are permanent, and I think personal mistakes are worse, but in business, there's not usually a massive error there. But it's a massive, massive plus for marketing. So through retail, we can find out, just through our analytics now, we can find out, you know, who gets the emails, who opens the emails, what they click on, where they find their information, what they're interested in, if they open the mail, if they didn't open the mail, if they put it in the trash, whatever. We can find out whatever's going on, and so can everybody else. So it becomes a very impersonal kind of way, but it actually helps business because it feeds off all of the information, especially in the consumer industry as well. So benefits for business, projects and initiatives can spread virally. So good project happens, you know what you've seen on YouTube, somebody makes a crazy video, trips over on stage or something like that, it's gone viral within 10 minutes and 400,000 views or 4 million views eventually. So everything can go viral and it has the potential to go viral. So if it's a great campaign, if it's an interesting campaign, if it's something new, if it's something innovative, if it's something clever, then it's a great marketing campaign. It's going to go straight ahead. We get immediate information as well uh, on all of our market needs from consumer trends. And we don't have to take a lot of time doing a, a, a lot of research because we can actually have research. Research is always at our fingertips. So the world becomes smaller, the information becomes bigger, and we can feed it much, much much more quickly. And obviously governments, corporations, well, governments definitely in the US, they like to check everything out, don't they? Governments, corporations, and other online bodies can easily gauge project success as well, so it's, it's quite clever. So I think we, we, you know, we need to definitely be careful on the one hand, but we also have to involve business and go forward. So creating an environment, not just a message. It's an environment, and that is exactly what social networks are all about, social media is all about. So business community, to create and participate in dialogue. So we have dialogue both from business to consumer, business to customer, and customer to customer feedback. So for instance, customers are now talking to each other about products, about all sorts of information, and then the businesses can actually find out from the consumers what exactly is helping their trends. So they can find out what the consumers are saying to each other, product good, product bad, product not very good, does it work? Is it a fan and it costs $5.99? Or is it a fan and it costs $10.99? Something like that. Is it, is it something that the guys are going to be doing in the Young Entre Entrepreneurs Club here? So they can find out information from these statistics and analytics. And obviously, we can embrace social media, which means approachable, dynamic, pro-business environment. And obviously, that's a real key to business su success. So I think it's all very interesting and very important. So now, just quickly to... Uh, sort of chomp on my permanence, which I'll come to in a second. Re-evaluation of social media is important for individuals and the business community. So what can it do for business? As it says here, global audience, we can expand these networks to the globe as far as we'd like to go, but we can also keep local appeal in local networks as well, so it's very, very interesting. Now, personal, we have to take care on that. We have a great, great risk. We have to be extremely careful about what we do and what we say and how it is, is shown, but I think you know it gives us a greater gain. So if we're looking at the permanence area, uh, there was a, a, I've got quite a few case studies, but one that always comes into my mind was uh, um, a girl called Paris Brown in the UK. You might know about her. She was uh, voted or signed in to be youth commissioner of the Greater Kent Police. Um, unfortunately, 17 years old. Great, fantastic opportunity. Unfortunately for her, what had happened was that on Twitter, there was a few alleged remarks that she made between the ages of 14 and 16, which meant that, unfortunately for her, they were interpreted as racial or homophobic statements. Um, now, what, what happened here was that the media in the UK, as you know, gets a bit of a frenzy going, and people start pointing fingers and saying, what's happening here? Now, this girl's only 17 years of age, and maybe she made a couple of mistakes. But I think what we should take from this is the fact that the weekend when the news was announced on the Friday, she 
had a press conference and she said to everybody, look, you know, I'm deeply sorry about these accusations. She was in tears, she was very upset. Um, it's obviously a mistake I made when I was a bit younger. I, it, you know, it's something I didn't really understand. So okay, so she, she did say she was sorry. And uh, unfortunately, by Monday, she and her family had decided that she should resign from the job. So this is, a, this is a really unfortunate situation, but brought on by social media, obviously she'd made some mistakes, but this is something for us all to recognize. And I think that, you know, I wanted to come here and be happy and be jolly and all these kind of things, which, you know, the guys here today have been really great, you know, but, you know, I must make this point because it's very important. So I think the most important thing we can take away from this is just be careful that you don't have a problem with your future careers from your past. So the last thing I'd like to say today is that if there is one thing you should take home today from this, is this, which is permanence. So be aware of it, have great fun on the internet, join the social networks, join the social media, but always be aware of your future and don't get caught as Paris uh, did with her unfortunate mistake. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and I uh, hope the rest of the day goes pretty good. Thank you very much indeed. Bye.